Hello and welcome to T3. One of the many ways Make It Work helps you achieve a stress-free digital lifestyle. I'm Jeremy Anticoni, and here's what's trending. In light of Facebook's recent privacy issues, the announcement of their new Open Graph API, which makes it easier for websites to access Facebook data, and their apparent disregard for users' privacy, people are doing what was once thought improbable, deleting their Facebook accounts. As we mentioned in our blog yesterday, May 31st is the web's quit Facebook day. Well, deleting your Facebook account isn't exactly a cakewalk. Facebook buries the delete button under a pile of help menus, and Facebook will actually bring your account back if you sign in 14 days after deleting it. I deleted my account on May 12th, and here's how I did it. First off, you need to disassociate any Facebook Connect accounts you've got out there. Websites use Facebook Connect to make it easier for you to log in. But if you delete your Facebook account before creating logins for those sites, you're not going to be able to access them at all. Next, use the Archive Facebook plugin. This is a Firefox plugin that will extract your pictures, messages, and more to help you save that data. And instead of searching through Facebook's help to find the link, use this link right here to go right to the account deletion page. Once you've deleted your account, email confirmation will go out indicating you've got 14 days. During this time, don't sign into your account don't use Facebook Connect, and don't click on any share or like buttons anywhere on the web because these will actually bring your account back. If you need any help with this, check out our blog at makeitwork.com or call 877-MAKE-IT-WORK. What is wrong with companies these days? Can any of them be trusted? Perhaps not. Google has been mapping the streets of the world with Street View since 2007. But they've also been secretly capturing data from unencrypted wireless networks as they drive by. Google has been keeping track of network names and unique identifiers of those wireless networks and hasn't disclosed what they would use this data for or why they would be tracking it in the first place. Well, in addition to wireless network names and locations, Google has accidentally captured additional data, meaning that they logged and stored users' personal information, including passwords and email addresses. Well, now they're saying it was, quote, a mistake. So what's the bottom line here? Encrypt your wireless network. While this is good practice, it may even soon be mandated. Germany's high court is now fining users with open wireless networks. So what's the easiest way to encrypt your network? Use the CD that came with it. At Make It Work, we recommend WPA2 encryption. Just make sure that you remember the password when you get it set up. If you need help getting set up as securely as possible, check out our website makeitwork.com. Given the privacy issues we're seeing way too much of lately, I thought it would be a good idea to give everyone some reminders for staying safe online. First off, keep strong passwords. Use numbers, symbols, and capitalization to make it difficult for somebody to guess your password and even more difficult to crack it. You can also come up with an easy way to keep different passwords for different websites. It's challenging to memorize all of these passwords, but if you create a base password and then customize it for each website, you'll be able to easily remember them. You can also use a password manager like 1Password to keep all your passwords secure, and then you'll just have to remember one to get into the program. Also, watch out for what data you post online. Remember that the internet is a permanent place. Anything that you post out there could eventually become public, even if you think it's private. Not only have we seen privacy breaches with websites, but if one of your friends wants to make something public, they can access it and post it anyways. Keep your computer up to date. Make sure that your antivirus and anti-malware and your operating system are up to date. Doing so will prevent from having your data or your identity stolen. Really a big problem. And don't click on websites or emails that seem suspicious or ask you for money, passwords, or other personal information, or appear to be written by an eight-year-old. Also, try using a browser such as Firefox or Google Chrome, which has built-in protections against identity scams. If possible, don't access personal information on public networks. And lastly, make sure you keep your own wireless network encrypted with a password such as WPA2. This will keep hackers and other people from connecting to your wireless network and potentially stealing your personal information. Thanks for tuning in for T3. For tech trends and more, visit makeitwork.com. I'm Jeremy Atticone, and that's what's trending.